countdown. All systems are go. One, boost for ignition. Stand by. Go with throttle off. Okay, hey, 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 the Bone Crusher has landed on a late Saturday night here in the right Panhandle. Here. Right and here, it is Zabom. I'm up here in Metro Atlanta. It's a little bit after midnight. It is Easter. He has risen. <laughs> hey, God made one man rise. Donald Trump is going to make the whole country rise. Mm. <laughs> yeah, he had the big plan to reopen the economy by Easter. It really didn't happen, Ooh. but hopefully uh, in another month from now, it'll it'll work. But it is right now Easter in Gwinnett County. We we're just 20 minutes after midnight on an Easter Sunday. Easter Sunday, and uh, the, I guess the liquor stores are obviously closed in Georgia on Sundays. But a lot of people are wondering why are the liquor stores essential? Okay, well, states. I do have an answer on that. I have heard an answer on that. It's because a lot of people, um, the really, really serious alcoholics, <laughs> um, have medical problems if they can't reach their alcohol, and they don't want mm -hmm. those people crowding the hospitals, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Have you heard about that? Yeah, that's right on point. It's 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 for the alcoholics that uh, could start having seizures and hallucinations and. You're right, the hospitals are busy enough. So we're keeping the, the liquor stores open for the addicts. That's kind of, that's that's a great thing, America. That is kind of crazy, you know, and I, you know, I'm pretty much an alcoholic myself, but I'm not <laughs> nearly in that category where, you know, if I don't have it, I'm going to have to take a trip to the hospital. But God bless those folks that do. What would uh, your situation be like if, if they cut you off or would you have just simply stocked up ahead of time? It would just be a little bit of me being grouchy, you know, irritable for a couple <laughs> of days or whatever. <laughs> Irritability, um, but that's about it. But thankfully, I'm not that bad to where I would have to, you know, make that hospital trip or um, have DTs or hallucinations <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> that'd be that'd be harsh. Um. A little advice to guys, uh, if a girl asks you for a camera, like for her birthday or for Christmas, do not go out and buy the most expensive, bulkiest camera with 5,000 features. You just get the simple camera, the point-and-shoot camera. That's what, that's what the girls want. Okay. And speaking of medicine, uh, the alcohol. Now, if you want CBD in this town... That's not an essential, right? And but the marijuana is. So two things. I was at I was at the Dollar Tree, and right next door is a medical marijuana place, and they were jammed. Their parking lot was so full. It's like that is not social distancing. All these wow. fucking yuppie hippies. I, I, <laughs> I mean, maybe what social, kind of place was this again? Medical marijuana dispensary. It's called Truvia, I think. Huh. Yeah, it's right next to the Dollar Tree. It's amazing. All you know, all these like yoga moms with so with uh, <laughs> you know, soccer moms with yoga mats come walking out. It's like that's you know that's not the your the stoner hippie you you think you're expecting. But hey, their prices are through the roof, and it's something like some sort of club you have to do. So I don't know what the weird rule is because people come out of there in droves. It's like they just had a class. You know, what are you you having a marijuana class? You can only buy it at two days at three o'clock, or what? How did, I don't even know how that works. It's like some wow. Club. So this must be a Florida thing. I have yeah. never heard of such. And up here in Metro Atlanta. Well, I wanted to buy some CBD, at, and the only place I get it is the freaking dildo store because that's the cheapest place to get it. <laughs> and those have been closed. Everything's been closed, and I refuse to buy it at the gas station because even if they have it, it's going to be a rip off. But the the dildo store they they are open, but they're only you have to call ahead. They're they're doing no contact uh, sales. You can't go in the huh. store. You have to stand outside and wait for someone to bring you your product. And, uh, and I think we went in one of those places. We went in there. I got an orange um, lollipop thing and some kratom, 
That was back in November. Yeah, I started here. They're closed now. Well, I, I went by today, and they were, they were, like, standing outside. So, like, hey, you know, can you, can you get me something? And wow. It's like, that's what you got to do to get your medicine. You got to fucking wait in line with a bunch of sex pervs at the fucking dildo store. So you're saying you can't find even, like, Kratom at the local gas stations down there? They some of them do have it, but they're it, I, I don't I don't usually get from get it there because it's so expensive. Huh. Okay. Actually, well, yeah. you know I do buy it. In fact, I'm gonna put this on my screen right now. Um. Oh. oh this That's these are capsules. Silver. Great time and to be silver. <laughs> it is. These are available at my local Chevron station. <laughs> Um, albeit, you know, it's not cheap, but, you know, it's still there and it's available. I bought that like a week ago. And when you buy that at your local area Chevron, you get a free Tony the Tiger calendar. <laughs> 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 uh, I had to buy my Kratom online for the first time in a long time. I, I ordered that. Okay. So, it's... You know, shopping online is, is where it's at right now. And that's where I got this headset that I'm wearing right now. Ordered that from Amazon a few days ago. It's here now, and I'm going to use it on Monday for my job. Well, working from home still? Or any chance of uh, any layoffs or furloughs? Are you worried about God. that, or is it everything? Yeah, I'm still you, worried about that. You busy? know, there's been no word. I don't. Yeah, we've been really busy. I mean, I haven't. You know, I've worked harder than I have, you know, on a daily basis in a few years, but I'm not quite sure how long that's going to go on. You know, I hope it continues, but there's always that chance that we're like in this really busy period right now and that it could drop off. Uh, but so far, so good. Mm -hmm. Hanging on to my job, working 40 a week. Well, when you're not uh, crushing it at work and making some power plays with that headset, you know, what are you doing to uh, pass the time during the quarantine? And a lot you of know, people not are... much, man. Still staying inside. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I go to the drive-throughs. I've been, you know, if you want drive-through views, I've been hitting up Taco Bell lately. Um, what do I recommend at Taco Bell? I recommend <laughs> the soft taco supreme get you a couple of those and get a chicken quesadilla all that cost you about eight bucks to the drive through and that's a good for lunch and dinner that'll take you through a whole day's worth of eating um, let me ask you about that because that's an interesting tactic you have you will buy two meals in one drive through sitting sure. I mean, by the time you get to that second meal are you reheating it are you eating it cold what's the quality of that Not bad at all. You know, anything that comes that. from Taco Bell, it's good if you microwave it for 30 seconds. So I'll get a couple of tacos, eat those fresh, and then the other stuff. I don't recommend, by the way, a hard taco for heating up later. Hmm. But the soft tacos, hmm. absolutely, those work great. So do the um, chicken quesadillas. All that stuff works great in a big 30-second heat up in the microwave. The only thing that I would recommend eating fresh and not storing in your fridge are the hard shell tacos. What about the double stacker Gordia crunch wraps? Yeah, <laughs> I've never had one of those before, I but I don't anything think that's, that's got thing. like a hard shell on it, you got to eat those right away. <laughs> the double Gordia crunch rack, uh, crunch potato supreme steak rolls. That's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, anything that's got a... Um, a hard shell, you can't <laughs> reheat those. You need to, to eat those fresh. Anything else, anything that's got a tortilla shell or the soft flour tortilla or whatever, those are fine to microwave. So that's my recommendation on that. Passing the time, hitting the Taco Bell. I, you know, I know a lot of people are playing these uh, Facebook questionnaires. You know, to, like you know, what kind of potato are you or. <laughs> These stupid questions are, you know, like, here's yeah, 10 jobs, one that. of those aren't real. Can you guess which one? And... Yeah, I don't play stupid Facebook games. 
but you know what? If that's your thing, go for it. I have no problem if you're into that. I just t tend to stay away from that. Hey, Bomb and myself and crushing the uh, WGT Golf on Facebook. If anybody wants to play some that, comment on the video, and we'll uh, play play some golf, some esports. Oh, I also want to ask you, what do you think um, Joe Biden is is going to be the the candidate for the oh, Democratic wow. Party? What do you think of that? And who do you think is going to be his vice president running mate? I don't like Joe Biden. I think he's an awful candidate. Um, if I had my choice, I would say, I don't know how this all this stuff works, but can we get the governor of New York, um, Cuomo? He's been a lot more like presidential through the whole thing. So I would like to see him be the Democratic candidate. I think Joe Biden is such an awful candidate that he's going to lose in a landslide. <laughs> he sucks. He, yeah, you got a point there. He's probably, I mean, there was a, a point, I believe, during the Obama administration when Obama was running for a second term where they had considered not bringing Joe back as vice president. God, and I forgot, that's right, he was the vice president that whole time with Obama, but, man, he, he sucks. He's just, um, he can't remember anything, he seems <laughs> to be, have, suffer from, like, a maybe a light dementia I just don't think he's a good candidate at all. Uh, again, would like to see, I believe it's Andrew Cuomo is the name of the uh, governor from the state of New York, would much rather see him take a shot at it. Well, he's already said that it, he's going to pick a female for his vice president. I mean, I don't think Cuomo, I, I mean, there's no, no one can run except Biden probably at this point. Right. I don't know if yeah, there's a way to do anything. So I, I have no problem if he wants a female as his vice president. I don't give a damn about that. All right. I'm going to uh, give you three female names, and I want okay. to know if any of these excite you for vice okay. president of the United States. And, and keep in mind, I'm picking these names because we need someone who can help him beat Trump. Uh, Oprah Winfrey. Huh. <laughs> okay. Does that do anything for not, you? Not bad, sure. Why not? Yeah, that that's strong. <laughs> I mean, we. I'm going to see your Donald Trump and rage you one Oprah Winfrey. I mean, we. You know, that's how you. That's one way to go at Trump with somebody just as okay. almost as outlandish as a candidate as him. All right, um, Michelle Obama. Sure. Okay. I back. like that. And I maybe, like that. And maybe. I mean, and this this one kind of excites me. How about we bring her back? For another round, Hillary Clinton. No, I don't think so. <laughs> but I would say in in place of Hillary Clinton, I would say Whoopi Goldberg. <laughs> Whoopi Goldberg. I, a, a, a colored woman? Producer Best says it's going to be a colored woman. Well, I mean, a Oprah. Woman. Yep. Yeah. Oprah huh. or uh, Whoopi Goldberg. Either way, um, what about the senator? Uh, what was that? What's her name that ran? That was running for president? The black female senator. I mean, she's not like black, black, black. You know, she's like a little vanilla latte. But <laughs> not sure which one that is. Camelia. No. Oh, right, from California. I yeah, sure. Her, she's fine. Any of those people you mentioned are fine. Um, but no, Sarah Palin, <laughs> and no, I don't know, no stupid. No stupid choices. So you but would like Michelle to Obama, see yeah. Oprah Winfrey Absolutely. before Hillary Clinton. Absolutely, Oprah, Michelle Obama, or Whoopi <laughs> Goldberg. Any of those, I would be okay I with. Mean, that that wasn't even that was supposed to be the unserious one. Yeah, I was <laughs> just joking, but and I and I and I've thought about that for a long time. Like, well, you know, I wish uh, uh, Oprah could could challenge Donald. Absolutely, absolutely. So. I'm all for that. And another question I have for you. I wanted to know uh, how A-Bomb is celebrating, not Easter, but Confederate History Month. <laughs> is that going on right now? Well, I've seen a couple of, I've seen two posts on Facebook. Somebody said <laughs> that Mississippi's governor, somebody made some quasi-official statement about Confederate History Month. And then Studboy's daughter, Vanessa, up in Tennessee, 
made a comment about celebrating Confederate History Month, and you know, she's very proud of the flag. Yeah, you know, she she's a young woman, and, and she is just eating all that bullshit up. And well, here's what I have about that. Um, if you remember, you and I lived across the street from that cemetery in Milledgeville. Yes. Yeah, that was a setting of a um, Confederate Memorial Day that I attended with my mom and dad. They actually came over there. And we ended up going to that cemetery, and they had this big reenactment of a bunch mm. of Confederate soldiers and everything running through there. Apparently, that cemetery was uh, used for a lot of Confederate soldier burials. And so that was the one time in my life that I've ever had any part of Confederate Mor Memorial Day. It was that place right across the road from that apartment complex we lived in in Milledgeville. You fucking cracker. <laughs> right. You know, I'm ashamed of that, absolutely, you know, to be uh, honest with you. And no, I'm no. also ashamed, like, you can see my hair right now. I don't want to be confused <laughs> as being a white supremacist with my <laughs> shaved head. And that's something I've actually thought about. Hmm. Well, yeah, that, you did, yeah, that, is, that, that is a concern, that skinhead look. Well... Yeah, I don't know. How do you combat that? What what can you wear or do to say, yeah, my hair is short, but I'm not a Nazi. I'm not a white supremacist. Well, I figure that it's just kind of the way it's going these days. Um, I kind of got on this early, but I'm seeing all kind of articles now about people shaving their head and, you know, how do you deal with your hair these days? So I'm not that worried about it. I think people would understand when they see me out in public that I'm not a white supremacist. <laughs> premises and I'm just like dealing with the current situation but it is a slight concern uh, but I think as more time goes by um, that will be less and less of a concern A-bomb's cult of the midnight oil just wear your midnight oil t-shirt and they'll be like oh yeah he's a fan of midnight oil I, I get that or you know, as you go through the grocery store you can you know, dance like that guy on Midnight Oil, the way he dances, and they'll, they'll like, oh, oh the real okay. tall guy. It's yeah. the Midnight <laughs> Oil thing. Yeah, the <laughs> beds are burning. But it is becoming <laughs> less and less of a concern. But it, it is something you think about for sure. Um, I do not want to be confused <laughs> with a white supremacist in these times. Well, to celebrate Confederate History Month, I'm, I'm going to Walmart tomorrow. I'm, I'm going to... Uh, Get a few cases of Bud Light, a Confederate flag, and some taco-flavored hamburger helper. That's how I'm celebrating. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to think, what, what, what rednecks eat? What do Confederates eat? I'm, I'm thinking they probably, you know, as much as they hate Mexicans, probably eat some taco-flavored hamburger helper. Absolutely, That's... they do. Yeah, they're a bunch of idiots. <laughs> so um, how's producer Beth holding up in these times? Producer Beth is good. She is staying at the house a lot. She doesn't want to get exposed to those coronavirus people. And, and you know, my and, and I told you about the neighbor across the street. This guy, he's a, he's a young guy with a mohawk, and they they do own a gun. And he was ignoring all the the, the COVID nineteen uh, restrictions. With the bars closed, he went to parties and he contracted it. And my other neighbor says he's not doing a good job of quarantining he's he's really uh so it's like that son of a bitch you know so it's in the neighborhood now on yeah. beach drive and there's not that many cases in bay county there's like 30 something cases maybe yesterday and one of them is right here and if he's got it his roommates probably got it now too mm. and yeah so are these younger folks a little bit younger. I think he's in his late 20s, and the other guy's a little bit older. Okay, well, supposedly those folks don't really get it that much anyway, so let's hope they're okay. I get the Rona, I get the Rona. I mean, the spring breakers were reportedly <laughs> in the elevators in our hotels picking their nose and wiping it on the buttons oh, Jesus. on the elevator. <laughs> if you I fucking get the kidding Rona, me? I, that's what I hear. That's... Get the Rona I hope they Rona. all die. I mean, and I tell you, what, speaking of Rona, I'm bringing up the COVID-19 screen here, even though I'm not sending you that video right now. I do have that up. 
since we're talking about it, 1.6 million total confirmed cases globally in America at over half a million. And uh, the number of Americans dying per day, I thought it, it, it had hit like 1,900, then it, then it actually went down to the low 1,900s, then it finally broke 2,000. So we have not, I mean, maybe we're seeing the apex now, maybe. Uh, but yeah, it, let's hope so. That's what I'm hearing, at least. We're not. It's not flattening. It hasn't started flattening yet. Maybe the apex, but it's still looking bad. I mean, 2,000 Americans are dropping dead every day. They they don't have places to bury them in New York, and there's still like, for example, uh, WMBB Television here in Panama City. Whenever they run a story on Facebook, the trolls. It's like they just they, they sit at home. They listen to Sean Hannity. And then they get online and comment on everything with all the crap they just heard. And they're like, oh, you know, it's, it's a hoax. Well, now, let's see, what's their latest mantra? Oh, the latest thing they're saying is that we're not counting the, that everybody that dies that has, has COVID-19. Is, uh, you've heard the, the baloney. I have. It's like, I dude, have. look at the fucking New York <laughs> it's City. Like look what's going on there. It's like every death they're counting is COVID-19, whether it's just a, a heart attack or whatever. Yeah, I yeah. have heard that. Like they're fake numbers. It's like all you got to do is look at the the new the, the mass graves they're building in New York for unclaimed dead bodies, and just realize you know we don't want that coming to our town. One guy's in Texas, like, hey, 26 million people. We've only got 269 deaths. Well, you see what's going on in New York. That you know that's gonna come to your town if you're not careful. And I, yeah, I think don't get uh, me started on Sean Hannity and his <laughs> followers. I don't know if you catch much of Alex. Is his name Alex Jones? Info Jones, Wars. Yeah, that he's the worst of them all. Mm-hmm. Like, he's not even like good enough for Fox News. He just has his own uh, website for all conspiracy theories. Yeah, right. Alex Jones and what do they call that show? Info Wars. Right. Yeah. yeah. They, they have that. That's on in this market. That is on in Panama <laughs> City. And oh, they, it's not radio there. Yeah. It oh is. wow! I it didn't is. know he was like, I didn't know he was you know, like good enough to be on an actual radio station. He's syndicated. He's syndicated. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the FDA has sent him oh, cease Jesus. and desist orders because he is selling products on his website that's supposed to cure you of the of the COVID nineteen. So and, and, and he got he lost like one hundred fifty thousand dollars in legal fees because like the family of the kids that died in what, what was it the sandy the, hook the, yeah the right. sandy hook shooting the, the they were all a bunch of fake whatever yeah, he said they were all fake they were all actors and <laughs> shit and they sued his ass and he lost god right um he's such yeah a he was he was all over that <laughs> um yeah i forgot what the name of them but they, he called them crisis actors yes crisis actors that's exactly right <laughs> i mean he's the guy that has that shit about the gay frogs like i don't know if you've heard that story i have the, not <laughs> yeah well we won't get into the gay frogs but he he's out of his mind yeah, the, what, yeah. something we're doing to the water is turning the frogs gay i don't know what it is. It's, yeah it's he's <laughs> He's all over any conspiracy, whether it's – I will give him this. He doesn't care if it's like a Republican or a Democrat thing. He's just all over it anyway. But just due to the nature of that whole scene, um, it's a Republican thing mostly and libertarians and whatnot. Now, I don't have a big beef with some of these limita- libertarians. They had a good show on WSB in Atlanta with a lady, and she seemed really – genuine she was trying she tried to get at the heart of the matter and shit and she wasn't you know she didn't have any political agenda she was also one weird thing is she was like pro legalizing heroin she had a brother who died (laughs) from heroin yeah he od on heroin and and surprisingly her her stance on that is to fucking legalize it because she believes that if you legalize it it'll be easier for people to get treatment Okay, sure. What well, and the needles and no AIDS. Yeah, no, I, don't, that's I shit. don't know, man. I don't need that kind of temptation. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, I'll just stick with kratom. I don't need any heroin. Don't make it legal. You know, I. Right. I don't want to see people go to jail for it. You know, just get them some treatment if they're hooked on it. That's all. 
And uh, another question, this is, uh, in fact, we'll, we'll, we'll lose the COVID-19 screen because this has nothing to do with it. Uh, my question is about Doritos. How come nobody can, can make a fucking generic nacho hmm. cheese flavored tortilla chip that's worth the damn huh, have you ever had a nacho cheese chip besides a dorito that was any good that you bought again i'm not even sure if i ever had one other than doritos like you said i don't think anybody's ever given it a try well you can go to the dollar general and get their doritos you can go to winn dixie and get their doritos hmm. uh but the Piggly Wiggly's got some, and they always charge them a little more than like their generic off-brand regular chips. So they're like, they're like two fifty for the generic hmm. Doritos. Did not know that. They're but horrible. I did just hear that that Taco Bell. Uh, we all know about the Doritos taco they've had for several years. They're actually doing a uh, fire Doritos now mm. taco. I just read about that tonight. I'm going to try that. I love it. Mm. But. Um, you know what? I've never had like any kind of off-brand quote Doritos. <laughs> well, don't come to think of it. I didn't even know they were available. Um, okay, interesting question. Yeah, I, well, I guess the patent the patent on Doritos finally expired, and you can have generic Doritos now. <laughs> <laughs> right, they're now available to the general public. Okay, so <laughs> what was your uh, reaction to when you actually got some? Some generic Doritos. Right. You know, I, at first I was excited. It's like, oh, I want, I'm going to get that Dorito satisfaction because they're normally like, what, four and a half, five bucks for a bag now? Fucking Very Doritos. Expensive. Anything yeah. with corn these days, yeah. Oh, I was disappointed. I, I was like, I'm not buying that again. It hmm, that's too bad. Yeah, I know. I know, and that's something you could get excited about. I mean, I bought some Shasta today. I, I, I don't have to drink Coke. I can still get cola <laughs> satisfaction. Why can't I get some fucking Dorito satisfaction? That's the one chip. I, it, you know, you can get that's something you picked up from there. the Davies family. The Shasta, George Davies. Yeah, George Davies and the Shasta. But he has stockpiled so much of that shit that uh, Chris said so it, it had turned and gone bad. That he didn't use it fast enough. He wouldn't share it. But damn, that grapefruit Shasta, that is pretty fucking good, man. <laughs> I could drink that shit. That was the first time I had like fruit soda. It's like grapefruit soda. That is. That's refreshing. It's crisp. Huh. It's it's perks you right up. It's delicious. And they still have it. You they still have um, grapefruit Shasta. Well, not at the store I go to, but if you find a store that has a good variety of Shasta, <laughs> you might have to go to Shasta's web tr site to track that shit down. I can I only. I think get... I've mentioned this before. The only really time, like my grandmother, my mom's mom, <laughs> um, was really big into Shasta and. <laughs> Her trailer catch, caught on fire one time, right? She lived in a mobile home, and she wasn't able to save much out of there, but she was able to save that Shasta, and she brought her over to my mom and dad's place oh. and stored it in their utility room, and that oh. stuff smelled like smoke and fire <laughs> and whatever, and I just have bad memories about that. Oh, I have man. not bought any since that time. <laughs> yeah, but it's, it's, every time you have a sip of, of Shasta, you know, it's... It's like go. It's like flashbacks to Nam or something, you know. Fire right. And I mean, smoke can you and... imagine like what, like two or three cases of Shasta that survived a trailer fire would smell like on the outside, and that's what it was. <laughs> yeah, you know, I had that. We had that fire in Milledgeville, and you know, anything you try to save out of there, it just smelled like smoke. It was not yeah, pleasant. Yeah, it's rough. I lost a guitar in that fire, bro. Oh, yeah, I do remember that. Uh, yeah, that was a rough fire too, man. Yeah, anything that survived out of that, you probably just really didn't want to keep because of all the ash and smoke and soot all over that. Well, Shasta, a little history on Shasta. I looked this up real quick. Shasta began as the Shasta Mineral Springs Company in Mount Shasta, California in 1889. <laughs> okay, well, there's why the, that's a good, you know part of the name you know at least we understand that in 1928 the name was changed to shasta water company and in 1931 shasta produced its first soft drink and until the 1950s the products were mainly mixers for alcohol drinks hmm. okay. and now you know <laughs> the rest of the story <laughs> i'm paul harvey good day 
Shasta was sold in the 60s to Consolidated Foods, later known as Sara Lee. That's about when we would have started understanding what it was. And has it been with Sara Lee that whole time? In 1985, it was acquired by the National Beverage Corp, who also know, owns a little soft drink called Fago. Ugh. Oh. <laughs> Nasty. Wow, yeah, that's not really a big Ugh. move. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I could see Shasta and Fago kind of line up, but, you know, that's... They got they got the bullshit soda market cornered, you know. They <laughs> right. got, they've got wedged out some elbow room, you know, with their Shasta. What about Fanta? You know, that's kind uh, of in the whole... Yeah, Fanta. Know, they should be included, too. Fago wants, or Fanta wants a little bit of that action. Yeah, when it comes to sodas, you know, if I really want a good soda, I will spend enough to get something with real sugar and not the syrup. I mean, that's the way you got to go. Yeah, absolutely. Right now I've got some Canergy. I love some Canergy ginger ale. That stuff is so refreshing. If you mm -hmm. need a little, you know, a little sparkling refreshment, <laughs> love it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the Shasta ginger ale isn't bad either, but I just got regular Shasta cola so I can... Some soda satisfaction huh. tonight. So how is that, by the way? You know, it's not so bad. You put it over a little ice and choke it down, and it's not so bad. It's not bad. Okay. I mean, it's not a Coke from Mexico. I'd rather have a Mexican Coke. I mean, in the Philippines, they've got the real sodas there, too, and they still come in bottles. And you can, and if you can't, it, with the bottles, though, here's the weird thing about buying drinks in the Philippines. If you get, like, a, gla a bottle of Coke, you have to sit there and drink that Coke. And correct me if I'm wrong, producer Beth, and and, and and leave the bottle at the store in some of these smaller towns. Oh, for like a deposit situation? Yeah, it's a deposit situation, so you can't take that <laughs> with you. So a lot of people get a soda in a little plastic baggie, like a Ziploc bag. That's how you get your soda if you want it to go. <laughs> wow, they just drink it right out of the baggie, huh? That's kind of rough, yeah. but I get it. Or you pay extra you for save the that deposit. Yeah. <laughs> and it was what was it the second hangover movie it, there was a scene in that movie they're they're in a different country in that one and they're drinking fago out of a plastic bag <laughs> no i didn't see that i didn't see number two <clears throat> and number two is is i would say number two is as good as number one beth what do you think uh hangover one or hangover two that's our poll question which was a better movie comment below <laughs> <laughs> And tell us what kind of potato you are to take our COVID-19 I'm bored as hell trivia quiz. Well, uh, hey, Mom, thanks for joining us Saturday night on the Bone Crusher Show. It's been a pleasure. It's Easter now. I think even in your neck of the woods, or if it's not, it's about to be there in about seven minutes. Now, normally you, you would go to... Uh, church with your mom and i believe you, uh, your mom is now uh, a catholic now is that right she is yeah she's big yeah. on catholicism and yeah i feel bad for her because first of all if you're a catholic and i didn't realize this until recently the big part about being a catholic is going to the actual weekly mass you can't just like for other kind of christians there's probably ways you can get away from going to the catholic mass or going from your weekly Sunday service, that is. But if you're Catholic, it's all about the weekly Sunday service. You have to go if you um, expect to go to the afterlife and get all the benefits of being that. And so I know she's really hating not going to, mm. going to her Mass. But it's got to be especially bad and particularly bad if you can't go on Easter Sunday. Hmm. True, yeah, that's a big day for Catholics, and I guess for a lot of uh, Christians, that's a big day. Right, but you grew up Catholic, so are you not aware that you have to go to the weekly service and get the sacrament and the body of Christ and all that <laughs> to continue to be a good Catholic? Mm, yeah, I would say you're right. Yeah, you have to be a good Catholic, you got to go receive your sacrament. Uh, if you don't... And I, I, and I, I, I guess I, I asked about this. I don't remember the answer, but you know, can you still if you don't go to church for a long time? Or, no, actually, so if you don't go to confession, 
regularly, then you're supposed to not, uh, you're not allowed to receive the communion anymore. So you have to do the confession sacrament on the reg. Otherwise you can't, you can't go receive the body of Christ. Wow. Yeah. There's just a lot of, a lot of moving parts. Yeah. It's, it's like, man, that's such a hassle. Last time, no, I, I went, <laughs> the second to last time I went to confession, it must've been like 14, 15. My mom bribed me and bought me a BB gun to get me to go to confession. And then the last time, the last actual time I went, you know, I had something heavy that I've been carrying around for 20 years. So I, I went to the, the, the place in, uh, in Duluth, not too far from where I work. There's a church there. And the priest, he, he freaking starts asking me about masturbation. You tell, I remember that. You posted about that. <laughs> ah, I'm like, oh, come on. You know. Are, are, it's like, if I'm coming here to talk about something, don't, <laughs> don't start bringing up a... a Another bunch yeah. of bullshit. He yes, might be totally a... unrelated. Well, is it a pedophile <laughs> if you're asking that question to like a 40 year old man? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's rough, man. <laughs> and so, yeah, I mean, there's just a lot of stuff. There's a lot of things that you know, have to be worked out, and it's. What's the old pony baloney doing, young man? <laughs> Uh, probably not a good Catholic. I, we may have lost a bomb there. Got a little Jay Giles freeze frame going on there. So I think we lost a bomb, but we're wrapping things up anyway. I um, want to thank a bomb for being on the show, producer Beth for standing by and uh, helping me out with some Catholic-related information. And Shasta products and, and the screen's gone all lacto. Okay, well, I've lost this, the video, so we're going to go ahead and call it a night. Thanks for tuning in to the Bone Crusher Show. Like and subscribe. And as soon as sports starts up, we will be back with more play-by-play -play reaction. Tonight's show has been sponsored by TreasureHunt.ga. That URL still isn't working. we got to get that shit fixed. What's up? This is the Bone Crusher. I'm a heavy drinker and selfish in the bedroom. Good night.